My name is Kate Swaffer and I'm living with younger onset dementia, having been diagnosed at the age of 49. At that time I was working full time, studying at the University of South Australia, raising two sons, one in year 12, running my home with my husband and volunteering. My life was interesting, busy and very fulfilling. I've previously had a career in health, including dementia. In 2014, I completed a Master's of Science in Dementia Care at the University of Wollongong and have completed three tertiary degrees since being diagnosed with dementia. Having the best life we can is something many of us desire and work towards. However, the question of how we and our loved ones can die is something many prefer not to think about. So in this short video, I hope to outline the positive reasons for us all to make or update our advanced care directives. I've been a formal family carer and advocate for three others with dementia who have all died. I spend my spare time advocating for our basic human rights, for full inclusion and against stigma and discrimination. Dementia was a catalyst for me to again review my wills and other end of life issues. And I understand fully the importance of doing this whilst I still have the capacity to plan for my own future. In all conversations, there should be nothing about us without us. And that means you and me. If we don't speak up while we can, for what we want when we either have an accident that incapacitates us or are diagnosed with an illness where our end of life care and health needs may need to be made by others if we haven't made them, then we place a significant burden and responsibility on others most often the people we love the most. And we may not be provided with the end of life care we would have chosen for ourselves. For example, I do not wish to be kept alive in the late stages of dementia when I may not be able to swallow enough to drink and eat by a feeding tube and intravenous infusion. I also do not wish at my age to be placed in residential aged care facilities. We all can become incapacitated in no way did I expect to be diagnosed with dementia, a terminal illness at the age of 49, and a mother of two boys. But it could have been a stroke or cancer or a road accident rather than dementia. And planning ahead is very important for all of these things as well. It helps to guide others. It helps family discussions about you on issues such as not wishing to be fed through a tube or kept alive on a resuscitator. It gives you and your loved ones some peace of mind and really helps the healthcare professionals in their caring role for you. It helps reduce family uncertainty and conflict. What will happen if you don't plan ahead yourself? Somebody else, maybe not even your loved ones, might have to make decisions for you or you may be forced into residential aged care for your perceived best interests or someone else's convenience. Everyone should make an advanced care directive. Adults at any age should consider making one. Young adults, older people, everyone over 18. There are many benefits in having the plans in place. When I updated my end of life affairs, my lawyer suggested if our children were over 18, they too should at least have a power of guardianship and medical directives, as there could be a case where they're put on life support and the medical staff won't easily accept your parental rights, which are not legal rights, to have a say in their future care. I believe death and dying is too much of a taboo subject in our society. And if we started discussing these things when our children started to drive or signed up to vote, then we would be more comfortable about death and dying in general. Death and dying is a part of living. And I often say we live until we die and also that we should live our very best life today, just in case it is our last. There is no need to be uncomfortable about discussing what we want when we are dying, as we are all going to experience it. I would encourage you all to plan ahead by updating or preparing your advanced care directives. After all, they are your wishes about your future care needs, including your wishes when you are dying. That way, no one has to guess what your wishes are reducing conflict and ensuring your health, lifestyle and end of life wishes are respected. Everyone has the right to live and die with dignity. Only you can possibly know what that really means for you.